Okay, so it's time for the meat and potatoes. How do we apply our font families and our styles to our actual content? Hey everybody, Joe Workman here, and in this video we're gonna look over how do we actually take our font families and our font styles that we've defined and actually apply that to our content, right? Because there's no fun in creating definitions and styles and not applying it to our content. So let's learn all the ins and outs on how we can take our styles and apply that to the theme and to all of our content. So here's a simple RepWeaver project that I've used in a couple other videos that shows uh, various font families and some font styles that I've defined on the page. Now, the easiest way and what I normally do and probably normally what you're gonna use the most is using, for font families, you're gonna use a vault and then in font styles, you're gonna use a style. So essentially with, with these, they behave the same. A font, a vault is for families, and then a style is obviously for styles, okay? And the reason these are simple is because they're baked into a lot of stacks for us, okay? Especially if you use foundation or total CMS. So here you can choose a vault or a family, uh, or a vault or a style. You can assign it to one of eight predefined styles or predefined vaults. And then inside a lot of your foundation or total CMS stacks, you can easily just simply select that font vault or the font style straight inside that stack settings. Again, this is the font foundation header stack. And then in the foundation paragraph stack, it supports it as well, as well as many other stacks throughout foundation and total CMS. Now you're probably thinking, oh, great, Joe, that's all fine and dandy, but what if I want to modify the style or apply a style or a vault to something that's not in foundation or total CMS, some other stack or a default text stack, right? Let's show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this content right here. And um, just for easiness, I'm gonna leave it the same. I'm just gonna set the styles and the font vaults to be default. So um, it's just taking things from the theme. There is a stack that ships with Font Pro called Font Box. And if we add this to our page, okay, what you notice is it's just a simple stack that you can drag anything you want into it. Now inside Font Box, you can go ahead and assign a vault or assign a style to that text, okay? And let's go ahead and do that for paragraph as well. This was font vault two and style one. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and preview this page. What you'll notice here is that, well, my paragraphs look pretty much the same, but my headers are completely different, okay? Now, the reason this happens is because of the way stacks are structured, right? Um, every stack is different and Fontbox does its best to try to apply a style or a family to a particular um, font box, but it's not perfect, as I said. So what can we do? How can we resolve this? How can I make this, this header here be the same as if I were to you know, define, it in, define it inside the header stack like we did in foundation header? So one thing that we can do is inside font box, you'll notice that there is a custom class option. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a custom class here. I'm just gonna add, um, let's add my header. So I've added a custom class of my header. Now this particular header I know is an H3 tag because I specified that I want this to be an H3. Now we're, we're gonna leverage that in a little bit here. So I set my, my class to be my header and then I know the header inside of it is an H3. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna target that. Okay, so inside my style, we'll notice that in the apply to settings, we have at the very, the last one, we have something called a custom selector. And what you do here is you put in your custom selector here. So what I've done is, now this obviously relies that you know a little bit of CSS here, right? So um, if this confuses you, this is, might not be for you, okay? But this is what we can do. I can do dot 
And then my class, because that's how we classify a class inside CSS is with a dot. So we do dot my header space H3 because we want to target an H3 tag inside my header. Let's go ahead and preview that. Sweet. Okay, so I got my style, okay? But if you notice the, um, the font is actually different, right? So this header up here has um, a font and this one doesn't, okay? It doesn't have my nice Google font that I was importing. So inside the font family stack, I'm gonna go ahead and in my headers, I'm gonna apply that custom selector there as well. So dot my header H3. And there we go. I now have used font box properly to apply the same exact styles using font box. Um, I kind of jumped into an advanced topic a little bit early with the custom CSS selectors, right? But you can use them in combination with font box to target the exact elements that you want inside of the font box, which is very convenient. So what I've done now is I've created a style that I'm gonna call red. Okay, and essentially all it does is it, it defines the text color as red, and then it underlines that with a black underline. That's all that this style does. It doesn't change text sizes, it doesn't modify spacing, it doesn't do anything else. It just colors it red and underlines it. Okay, so how do we apply this to anything that we want? Okay, so what I've done here is instead of applying this to a style, okay, what I've done is I've applied this to a class. Now, I could apply this to a style if I wanted to, okay, and then that would get applied to anything that I added that style to. However, by using a class, it gives us a little bit more flexibility because I can then name this class whatever I want. And here I've called the custom class for this style, fire. So how can we use that? I can go ahead and inside, let's say this header stack, it has the ability to add a class to the header, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set that custom class to be fire. So I'm adding the fire custom class to this header. Now remember, we're also inheriting the styles from font styles number two, okay? So let's preview this and see what happens. As you see, I it did sort of work, right? Um, I got my underline, but I didn't have my um, some of my other attributes. The text is still white, I still have the text shadow, right? So let's go ahead and change um, something. So I'm gonna go into my style, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on the force button. So I'm gonna say, bang important, yes, I want this to override anything else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna preview that now. And you see now we have made this header red with a black underline, right? Just by simply creating that fire class inside the style and assigning it to the header. Now why this is great is because um, this header is still inheriting some of the styles such as the drop shadow um, from the style vault number two, right? From here, okay? But I'm just overriding other key factors with this red style. So this allows you to do some inheritance and other things, which is really cool. And it once you get used to this, this will provide you a lot of flexibility and a lot of power. And of course, I can add that red class to anything. So you see, if I wanna add it to this paragraph, I can go and add a custom class here, type in fire. I can preview that. And obviously that's gonna look like it's not gonna look nice, right? But it did the job. It applied the red text and the black text decoration to that entire paragraph. Just shows you how powerful and easy it is to kind of create your own styles and apply those styles to other elements. Now, the last piece that we haven't reviewed yet in terms of applying your font styles and font families is the page selectors. So if you click on the page button, you'll notice a grid of buttons displays. And this contains various elements, HTML elements that we use across our entire site, whether that be paragraphs, H1s, H2s, H3s, block quotes, forms, bullets, links, and buttons, okay? 
So what you could do is you can create a style and assign that style to let's say all H1, H2, and H3s on this page, right? Or let's say you want to apply it to paragraphs and buttons, okay? And as you see, you can click as many of these as you want and it will apply that style to that element on the page. Now, what you may want to make sure is let's say maybe you want to use Font Pro to define your page styles as defaults. So what you could do is you would add these first. Then you could override those defaults with font vaults and font styles. Okay, so this gives you a way of providing nice defaults and more granularity for styles and families um, across your entire site. Now, before we go, I wanted to make one quick note about foundation site styles. Because in foundation site styles, you have the ability to define fonts, an H1 font, H2 through 6, and then your default paragraph fonts. Now, if you're going to be using Font Pro, especially if you want to define all the defaults in Font Pro, what I recommend you do is inside these, you set the font to be Font Pro. And what this does is it tells foundation that you don't need to worry about the style defaults for text in terms of sizing and what fonts to use. Font Pro is going to manage this for us. So this is a, a, a nice step to make sure that foundation actually passes the responsibility of managing the default styles for your fonts all the way to Font Pro. And there we have it, everybody. That is kind of the ins and outs of how we can use um, Font Pro to apply our font styles to um, our content. Now, obviously, I didn't dive too much into like CSS. I told you the CSS selector, right? There's a lot of possibilities there, right? And if you want to customize, you know, a particular component in a theme, like you want to target that particular element, right? You're going to have to know a little bit of CSS, right? Because you need to be able to find that selector and then, you know, put it inside that setting. Now, obviously you can use commas and you can put multiple selectors. It is just like defining a CSS selector inside your CSS files. Now that probably scares a lot of people, right? So if that's not for you, then it might not be for you. Okay. Or go on the forums and ask for some help uh, and learn, right? Um, it's not too complex. Okay, um, I do have some tutorial videos on CSS and stacks and how you could potentially figure out a selector. Okay, um, if you want to do stuff like that in, you know, small cut tweaks and customizations, learning that is going to be very beneficial and powerful for you. Now, we can go really far with the little simple things that I did, like adding a class and then, you know, figuring out the class name and each three inside of there, right? That's kind of the, the beginner basics, right? And I hope that I showed a good example of that. So as you see, you know, adding all of these styles to our fonts, um, it can be elaborate. And I'm sure as the more you use Font Pro, the better you're gonna get at it, right? And strategies in terms of how you can define some defaults. And then you can define classes that kind of maybe override them. Or you have styles for, you know, this is my header, this is my paragraph. And then you can have small things like accents, like that red that we had. And maybe it's not a color. Maybe it's um, I want to make a particular paragraph smaller. Maybe it's like a quote, right? And we want to make sure that those are maybe styled slightly differently than a normal paragraph is, right? So really, Font Pro gives you all the powerful tools that we need to modularize, if that's a word, right? Modularize all of our styles for our text. Very powerful. Um, I'll stop blabbing. I hope you use this. I hope Font Pro um, and applying these styles really makes, um, you know, styling your text easier, more powerful. So thank you very much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video and take care. Love Font Pro.